Yo, what is going on, Steeler Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Steel Factory Podcast. I think this is episode 403, live from Pittsburgh. My name is Rion. I'm joined by my co-host, Junior. What's up, what's up? Um, yeah, man, that's a wrap on the preseason. We're going to dive into this last game and kind of just talk about the whole training camp preseason uh, as a whole and then basically look towards the start of the season in like 13 days. We're recording this Monday the 26th uh she'll go up tomorrow tuesday um but yeah man uh what were your first impressions of the game and we lost again i mean it doesn't matter but we got to see russ and fields kind of score with ease i'd say um but yeah what'd you think i mean it's good to see them like score it's good to see the offense like able to do anything um i think it was against like the lions third and fourth they seniors. didn't they didn't play any starters i think but yeah i mean the main thing of the preseason is when your starters do get fee it's through, not fees i'm reading this fucking thing right now in front of me when your starters do get reps in the preseason you kind of just want to at least see them score with ease at least like you know it looks easy out there for them you know what i mean um yeah and everything yeah, just looks so hard the last two games for fields and russ um but yeah, it looked it looked easy. Cordell Patterson had a nice little uh, run. I it's like I never really paid attention to him. I knew he was like a guy that was explosive on kickoffs and punts too, um, on the Falcons. But I never really knew how much of like a I guess an asset he could be. Uh, what did you think on that? I think it was a straight handoff to him, and he just fucking took it like forty yards. No, he he looked good. I mean, that was something I was like. Uh, when we when we first signed him, I, that was one of the things I was most excited about potentially happening. You know, as much as you could be for like a third string, essentially running back. Um, I know a few years ago in Atlanta, you know, he had a really nice season um, as running back because I pr- I'd only ever really known him off of kickoffs. So hopefully, yeah. you know, he has that experience in Arthur Smith's system. Totally. Like, so, so that's always really good. I, I'm sure. Uh, I, I'm sure he's gonna feel like at home i guess yeah so i i i think um i think it, it's good to have a guy that like knows the the system you know already and and i i don't know i don't know what to expect of him i hope i hope it's more of this kind of stuff i, I think he's uh he's going to be another good change of pace back because he's obviously like still he still has it i don't think because uh, he's like 32 everyone was yeah. saying that yeah he is old but you know he's still got it kind of um, yeah, I, I think if if we you know if we pick and choose his spots, I, I, we can right we can make uh you know we can make we can make the most of him. We certainly had the depth of running back with Najee and Warren. Yeah, he could be a good gadget guy. We'll see how the new kickoffs, how that works with him. I know he didn't really get much reps at training camp. I didn't see him at all. Um, he I think he was just on the pup list, just didn't practice. But then I think he suited up last week, didn't play, suited up. And played this week uh, at the at the game against the Lions, but yeah, that was exciting to see. Um, Russ kind of just yeah, we wanted to see him kind of command the offense. Did a good job at that, and then they scored. And then Herbig, Herbig is a stud, dude. I forgot to bring him up last week. I think he had like two sacks or a sack and a half against the Bills, but again, I think he had the forced fumble this game. Stud. I honestly, this might be a hot take. He is going to have a better season than Highsmith this season. I could see it happening. Going into a second year, Highsmith. Dude, I just seen a guy go up the fire skate with like a 30 pack of Miller High Lives. That is crazy. It is Monday. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, um, but yeah, I, Highsmith kind of had like a, not like a fall off season, but he had the whole season in 2022 when TJ was out. Um, he had like 14 sacks, and I don't think he got to double digits last year. Um, but yeah, I think Herbig is gonna take away a little bit some reps from him, and I think he's due for a really good good season, a breakout season. Um, what'd you think? No, I I, I remember the, I, the last uh, couple weeks, I've definitely seen like a few tweets here and there talking about how how Herbig is looking like very improved, and maybe they should put him up, uh, you know, closer to the line of scrimmage just because like. Like he is, he, he does seem to develop like a lot of the tools to pass rush more effectively. Yeah. So yeah. like I, I I'm definitely excited for that. I I think um 
you know, like our our weapons on defense to attack the quarterback have been, you know, I, I feel like we've done a really good job of consistently adding, you know, talent uh, you know, as as certain players get older, right? Like Hayward is, you know, he's still a great player for us up front, but, you know, he's older, right? And then obviously, like, Wa is definitely, like, in the middle or, like, in the back half of his prime. Um, and then Hightower, you know, he's, he's like, a very – he's a young ascending player who I think is going to uh, – play with us for a good long time and he's hey. obviously getting paid like it right and, and yeah Herbig, he got obviously contract last off season before the yeah. season right yeah yeah and and then our herbig's obviously like showing a big jump in development yeah. like in his second year so hopefully hopefully we can keep it going i i think what's really great is uh like hightower and herbig they weren't high smith or uh, yeah high smith <laughs> high smith and herbig we we didn't really spend a ton of draft capital on these guys. Yeah, like third and you know? fourth round picks. Yeah, exactly. So if we can keep doing it and consistently develop them into like real, um, you know, threats and like high caliber players, like th this is exciting. I think uh, it's one of the biggest things for like a defense to have, especially in the modern day NFL, uh, where like the edge rusher is the most important quarterback or is the most important player behind the quarterback. Yeah. Um. So like the fact that we can maintain um you know a good defensive line and keep the players like coming in and yeah you gotta I think retool it, it, right that way you're not rebuilding basically you gotta reload yeah yeah for the fact we're consistently retooling which is yeah uh, you know i'm excited about herbig but i'm also I'm, I'm more excited that we can apparently scout these guys and right and right. you know coach them up to be oh, yeah. like actual players yeah and then um the d line seems to be in a good spot too i mean it could be a little frightening knowing that we could move off Hayward either like next off season or something, but seeing the progress of Keanu Benton as well, guys like Montrevious Adams, Louder Milk, they're really good depth pieces. We still have, um, uh, I'm blanking 99. Uh, we kind of didn't like his contract. He sounded like a three year, 10 million each year per year. Oh my gosh. Number 99. Let me see. Uh, that's not good. This is embarrassing. Um, 99 Steeler. Ogunjobi. There Ogunjobi. Go. I knew it started with an oh O. I was going to say Oludokun, but that was the dude we cut. Um, that we spent like a seventh rounder that he didn't even make it through camp like two years ago. Um, Ogunjobi, we still have him. Him and Hayward haven't really uh, gotten any reps at all this preseason, so we'll see how they look week one. But yeah, to have the good depth behind them in uh, Benton. Um, Montrevious Adams, Louder Milk. I think I'm sure I'm missing a name or two as well. But yeah, that's good to see. Um, secondary looks okay too. Well, when Cam Sun gets back, it look a lot more fortified as well. Um, that's not like Cam Sun gas. It's just like the, he had a pick, <laughs> so he seems yeah, to be yeah. doing all right. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's a decent slot corner. You yeah, know? yeah, and then that's, we'll have that's what we're saying. We'll have Corey Trice come along as the season progresses as well. This will technically be his first year because he was out all last year. Um, I'm excited to see him. I know he kind of had like a kind of tweaked his groin this game, but he'll come back in a couple weeks or so. It looks like, yeah, of course, Porter. Um, we'll get really into like the roster depth next week. I wanted to say this because we're obviously we're gonna have cuts. I think either this week at the end of this week probably. Um, we have to get, dude. I kind of miss. Um, just because it'll give us more news to talk about when they go from like 90, then to 75, then to like 60, then to like 53. They just go straight from 90 to 53 on the roster now. And then obviously we'll see the practice squad. Um, Bro, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, I miss when they go away. like five cuts a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. It does take away from the drama of right. like the whole thing, you know? I'm sure Hard Knocks is affected by it too. Yeah. I, I bet like, uh, it's tough to build up dramatic moments. Yeah, it's like yeah. every, it like every, you know, the 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 more like stepped cuts makes just makes for like better television. I think. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but yeah, that kind of wrapped up what we saw this training camp. Um, from the offense and the defense, obviously more confidence in the defense uh, as we've had the last like three four years. Um, but overall, we're going to get really into like season predictions in this next episode because we'll have more like a gap 
um since there's no game next week um but overall how would you grade our preseason and uh on a, like an a through f scale uh, like are we counting like like just do offense and defense they could be separate i guess uh defense I mean, we've lost every game. <laughs> so, but I, I but guess I mean, our obviously, depth is what you could grade, and then um, the I, I starters that like did get reps. I would say like a, a B on defense. I thought, you know, nothing. I, I'm not overly impressed. Uh, but at the same time, I, I know, like, we didn't really put our best foot forward. On offense, I would say C+. Plus. I'm not – I'm like – Obvious, like one of the big storylines the last few weeks has been like everyone's talking about how dog shit our line is, especially after most of the off season going into like or bu- was building up the talent that we yeah. have at our offensive line. Uh, so that's a little um, uh, worrying is probably the best word. I, I don't. Maybe we'll probably fig- we'll fr- we'll figure it out. Obviously, the line that we put out was always a work in progress and kind of like put together with scotch tape. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, that's never you can't really judge it much. Based that's not instilling on... much confidence, but yeah, that's what that's the reality. Yeah, um, but then obviously, you know, we have like our, our quarterbacks too that drag us down a little bit. How about um, the the like the parody between I guess local media and national media? I guess a lot of us on the inside knew there really was no quarterback competition. I mean, you could play it as much as you want with Russ having the calf issue the first like two weeks of camp but national media really made it seem and people were talking about this on twitter today especially after russ only took like five snaps in that last game he was not worried about losing the job at all right i mean national media tried to spin it you know they need headlines they wanted to see um could fields take the job from russ etc 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 um but overall um how did you feel about how that all ended up playing out I mean, it, it's it's just the same thing, dude. Like everything, everything is fake news. Honestly, you can't you can't you can't trust any like the national media. It's it's pretty rare that like I go to like any kind of ESPN or anything, you know, like yeah. like that for for like sports takes. They're all pretty terrible, um, and and basically just built for clicks. I think, uh, you know, I I think uh, if you want more genuine analysis, there's better places for it. Um, I, I think a lot of people that were being honest with themselves definitely knew that Russ was going to be the week one starter. Like it, that was never really a question. What yeah. made it interesting barring though, how, how severe that injury really was, but it was, yeah, yeah you know, you know bar, barring injury. Like I think everyone, everyone being honest with themselves, uh, knew Russ was going to be the week one starter, but the more interesting topic is like, okay, we all know that Russ is washed, right? He's cooked. So, yeah, like it's like okay. Well, depending on how washed Russ is and how much the the Arthur Smith offense can compensate for him and or make him almost a non-factor, like, will we see Justin Fields, you know, usurp him, like, in week four, or week eight, right? Like that. That was the more interesting yeah. conversation. It's like okay, can can Fields show enough? Uh, through the preseason and obviously like in practices to to basically take the job from Russ. And if that were to happen, you know, how would it go down? It's like, oh, they'll probably just say that, you know, Russ is still having lingering issues with the calf and um, and they're going to take it week to week or whatever and they, they're just going to slot fields in. Just yeah, to, give them know, a spot make... start just to kind of, you know, feel it out. You know, yeah, we're two and three. Like, you got to try something, something make... you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, something to make uh make make sure that we you know we're not putting it on Russ. Like something to make sure that like oh like we're not benching Russ. You know that's yeah. what they want to make it look like. It's yeah. like okay, no Russ is definitely the guy. He's just hurt, but we're gonna put Fields in, and if Fields starts playing well, we're just gonna kind of forget yeah. about it. I mean, yeah, we'll see what happens in the season if that does happen. But Fields didn't really do much for his case. Um, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it was yeah. so easy to go to Kenny like was it week three, week four in his rookie year because the dude had like a perfect passer rating in his rookie preseason and then Mitch wasn't getting it done. Um, we were on not in a good spot, but I mean, yeah, Fields could have had like a preseason like that. Then it would have got interesting. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think um, Mitch was terrible. Mitch was just really bad. Yeah. If, if Mitch is 
a five out of ten. Russ is definitely like seven and a half to an eight. <laughs> yeah, I, I would even say no. I mean, Mitch is probably like a like a no. I'm just saying. Half. I'm just saying. Like, if you were to grade them like on the same scale, like put yeah, Mitch out okay. of five, Russ definitely three points ahead of him. If you want to put yeah, that, yeah. like, if you want to straight up out of ten, I'd put Mitch at like a two as well. Yeah, and then from there, Russ is like a six. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd be closer to that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, going back to it, it's like I, the national media is obviously just doing stuff for clicks. Like Russ is a big name. The Steelers are a big organization. Um, you know, we have one of the largest fan bases, right? Yeah. So it, it, it's just, I, I think it that was all talk. I think the more real conversations were about is there potential for Fields to take over this job in the mm-hmm. future? Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, there's people that still would like to see Fields. Um, but Russ does give us a better shot at winning, and that's the most important thing. But, yeah, we'll see how the season plays out. I'm excited. Uh, we, we're there, dude. We're so here. Preseason's over. College football kicks off this this week. High school started last week. But, yeah, man, we're basically right in the, the start of it now. Um, getting really excited. I like that we've kind of been consistent with these episodes throughout the preseason as as interesting as it could be, it's hard to kind of, you know, come up with topics in the preseason. But I think we did a good job, and now we're getting really into the season. Next week, we'll really dive into our schedule. Uh, we'll kind of have an idea of what the full roster would look like. We'll see how the O-line shapes up. Um, we really went hard on them last week. A little bit better this week. But uh, we'll see how the full um, combination looks like. And then I'm guessing Russ will be named a starter sometime this week as well, officially. He's always been one on the dev chart since they released the initial one. But, yeah, I think that's going to do it for us today, guys. Any closing thoughts, dude? Uh, no, I mean, I think, yeah, it's just been good to have, uh, like, the preseason to sort of warm up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, ourselves, you know? Yeah. This isn't as easy as I make it look, you guys. Uh, oh, yeah, no, no. We're uh, at No, it's going to be good. It's been good. I, it's been I, – I don't trust preseasons anymore. I think I, I learned a very hard lesson last year trusting – or thinking that this or our offense last year would be presentable instead presentable. of what it was. Yeah, uh, I mean. So you know, seeing us be kind of bad, I'm not. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, we got. To, I mean, the Falcons and the Niners are completely different beasts to take on. Uh, so I'm excited to just be playing the Falcons this week. Just hopefully, no one fucking. Hopefully, that doesn't backfire on me. But it is just the Falcons. They're also like in a similar spot as us. New OC, new coach, uh, new QB. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been the Steel Factory. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, check out all the links below if you're watching us or listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Leave a rating. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and peace out.